Um, here's you know here's the standings, and I I openly admit I haven't really been paying that close of attention. Um, you know they were talking about. Um, you know, a lot of people were like, Hey, we need, you know, we need to get help. These people need, and I'm like, guys, if, if, if we're not going to get over 500, it doesn't matter. Like no, nothing else matters because this team could not get over the hump and get over 500 for a while there. They couldn't even get back to 500. And well, now they are. And we look at the next 12 games. Ricky talked about it earlier. They don't, they don't have to leave the Bay area for 12 games, which I think it covers about two weeks you know, roughly, I think there's a day or uh, one or two days off in there. Um, so, you know, they get Detroit, who's not good. Um, they're also, I believe, missing Scooball in Detroit or, w- or when they play Detroit. They're getting Atlanta, who is just floundering right now. You get the A's, who, you know, they, they showed they can hit. And you know they can hit for some power, especially. But their pitching is not great now. The Giants did score what like three runs against them in the two games total. So eh, hopefully the offense shows up this time. But and then you get the White Sox, who are on a historically bad pace. I don't know if you guys have looked at their record, but it's right up there. They are twenty eight and eighty nine. They, they are yeah. on pace to be the worst team in the history of baseball. <laughs> I mean, their manager just got fired, and this is a guy that just got fired while having a team that nobody expected to be any good, and somehow he's even below those expectations. (laughs) So, I mean, that team is now, of course, that might inspire them, Um, but you know, this is their chance. You know, there's there's no excuse to not find a way to put at least eight wins, I think, on the board in those 12 games. I mean, maybe nine. I mean, you almost kind of need them to go like nine and three, honestly. But this is the chance that they could jump way up the standings. You know, they've jumped Pittsburgh. They've jumped Chicago. I think they were already ahead of Cincinnati about a week or so ago. But they've already jumped two of the teams. And, you, you know, they're only a half game behind St. Louis. They're, what, two and a half behind Atlanta. And then they're three behind the Mets and they have the tiebreaker on the Mets. So at it, it's time like, cause there's they're they're going to have a tough September, but this is their chance to really reinsert themselves in the wild card. So. Yeah. And I was just looking in, in this time, they're going to be in the Bay area for the next couple of weeks. They have two days off throughout that time span. So there's no excuse to not be well rested. You're staying at home. You have two days off and you stay on the Pacific time zone going up to Seattle right after that long, you know, home stand and then little two game stint in Oakland last. So before going to Milwaukee for only an additional three. So they're going to be staying out here for a long time. So there really shouldn't be any excuses of fatigue from travel and, you know, being on the East coast. So they, they have a chance to really get greedy here and get some nice momentum going into all these divisional games. And, you know, even a few against the Cardinals coming in to September. Yeah. I mean, they're playing 600 balls since the all-star break. So I would love to see that trend continue. That's all I got to say. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, how many wins do you guys think it's, I, I've, I felt like 86. We'll get there. I mean, I, I get looking at like if teams continue on the trajectories they're at as far as like, you know, their win percentage paced out over 162 games. I think it's actually closer to like 87, maybe even yeah. 88. But I do think kind of the way teams are trending, I, I feel like it's going to be closer to 86 if they have the tiebreaker, at least. I think 87 mm-hmm. they can get in without having to worry about any of that. But I mean, my, I don't know. <clears throat> yeah, I'm kind of right there with you, Cody, on that one. I I honestly see a little um, a little regression coming from St. Louis. I think they got hot way too early, and I mean, you look at the run differential; they're really not any better of a team than the Giants. Um, I mean, they're at a minus 46 right now, and they really had that one little hot streak right around the time that they were playing the Giants out in Rickwood and St. Louis. So. I look at them as a team that's regressing. Obviously, we already talked about Atlanta. Atlanta at 60 and 54, 
they at one point in the season were up there with the Phillies and they've just completely tanked since then. So I think they're another team. I can't see either of those teams getting around 86 wins, but um, you know, you do have the Padres and the the D-backs who have been equally as hot, if not hotter than the Giants right now. So I definitely think those two teams are going to be the biggest competition. And like we said, luckily the Giants get to play each of them, I believe six times. So. Yeah. Yeah. They control their own fate. Ultimately we, I mean, we put ourselves yeah. in this position. We're getting hot at the right time, but ultimately it comes down to, you know, we control our own fate and it's going to be, uh, it's going to be fun to see fellas. That's all I got to say. It's going to be, it's going to be a fun next couple months. Yeah. Uh, which questions are cap? Are you talking about, Oh, who are they playing? Uh, if you look on the right hand column, you can see it says next game it says who each team is. Uh, well, I mean, Phillies are playing Arizona. I know right now, um, but it'll tell you kind of who's playing <clears throat> tomorrow. So at least you can see the next series. I, I don't honestly know. Like I said earlier, I'm not really scoreboard watching quite yet. I'm more worried about the Giants putting some distance between themselves and 500. Um, yeah. My opinion is if they can do that, a lot of the rest will take care of itself over the next, you know, three weeks. I mean, so <laughs> if they if they can get themselves to seven, eight games over 500 by the end of the month, they're probably going to be within a game of the last wild card. So, and you know, the, the reality is right now they have the tiebreaker against the Mets. They have the tiebreaker against the pirates. Uh, they're not going to be able to probably have the tiebreaker against St. Louis. Although I guess if they sweep the last series of the year and I don't remember what the, the follow-up is, maybe, um, Atlanta, they took two of three, you know, they only have to take two to have the tiebreaker on Atlanta. Uh, they're what I think they're three and four versus Arizona. So they would need to win the four of the last six to have that tiebreaker and San Diego, they're four and three. So they only have to split against San Diego, but you know, those are two teams that if you're going to catch them, you kind of need to at least win four of the last six. Like you're going to have to do that to, to try and cover some of that ground. So yeah, I mean, I'm, I don't know, uh, Cap, who they're playing, but, um, you know, Giants just need to worry about themselves and, and take it a game at a time. So, yeah, I mean, ultimately, if they make it through the end of August and can get up to, you know, six, seven above 500, which is, should be more than doable with the teams they're playing, then I think eventually you're going to see a little bit of a slide from San Diego and Arizona. I mean, I don't see them playing, you know, eight and two ball every 10 games like they are right now. So ultimately if you can do that, you're, you could be looking at being only a game and a half or two games back from them, even if they continue to play like pretty decent ball, like 550 ball. So, you know, I, like I said, if, if they can just take advantage of these weak teams, like they've been doing since the break, they're going to be right there. And then all they have to worry about is beating these teams that they're going to have on their schedule in September. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, looking at the rest of this month, they, I mean, they've got Detroit, Atlanta, then they get the A's Sox, and then they have in Seattle, which I mean, Seattle's doing a little better now that Araza rain is there. And um, who else did they trade for? They, they grabbed someone. Oh, uh, Justin Turner. Yeah. I mean, the offense has picked it up a little bit for them. That's going to be a tough series. Um, they also have Milwaukee in Milwaukee. Uh, that's going to be tough. <clears throat> now, granted, I will I will say Milwaukee, oddly enough, is one of those cities. You know, we talked about Cincinnati and Washington being cities that the Giants have historically been pretty bad in. For whatever reason, Milwaukee's been one that's actually treated them pretty decently <laughs> over the years. So maybe they can go and take two in that. I mean, to me, if you can get out of that stretch three and three, you take it and you just run with it. But um, cause then they get Miami at home right afterward. So it's yep. like they could very easily see themselves on September 2nd, seven, eight games over 500 and be just in position to, like you guys said, beat the teams in front of you and then go from there, which I mean, don't get me wrong. September is brutal. Like they have to go to Baltimore and to Kansas City on top of playing, you know, all of these, you know, is Arizona and San Diego games that are hopefully they're peaking right now. 
San Diego and Arizona. And then by then they're kind of cooled off, but I mean, that's going to be a tough month. 